What's going on, guys? You're watching Mike the Musical Vegan Beast. I hope you got your trash bags ready, because today's garbage day. <laughs> Garbage day! Huh? No! <laughs> and I've got a banger of a video for you today. And we're going to do it on one of the most highly contested subjects in the conversation about agriculture. And that is the one and only... But crop depths, though! We've got a lot to go through in today's video, ladies and gentlemen. So I hope you stick around with me till the end, because this is going to be a good one. And maybe, just maybe, we can put this subject to rest. Oh, and by the way, we're not making marginal cases here. We're not talking about mom and pop's family-owned local farm or your confirmation bias because you happen to know a guy who knows a guy. Who knew this guy? 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 Who knew this guy's cousin? Who knows a guy that's familiar with what they've seen and done with, with this kind of stuff? Okay, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the big picture here. So if I hear any of that in the comments, okay, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go through this door because you, sir, are out of here. You are out of here. None of that aforementioned stuff has anything to do with the grand scheme of things. So that's why we're excluding it. But I digress. So anyway, guys. With that out of the way, let's just jump right into it. In today's video, we're gonna ask and answer six big questions when it comes to crop deaths, which are the following. Number one, what exactly is the contention in the crop production discussion? Crop production discussion, what's your function? I got and button or they'll get you pretty far. Number two, how are the world's land and resources being utilized? Number three, which are the most common animals that are around during crop production? Number four, what leads to animals dying during crop production? Number five, what is the estimated death toll as a result of crop production, not including animal agriculture? And number six, what can we take away from all of this? Once we answer those questions, I'll be sure to present my final thoughts, so stick around. And without any further ado, let's get it on! The main point of this question is to create the hypothesis in which we will use to answer other questions moving forward. The claim from non-vegan diet groups is that crop production for ba- For what? <laughs> the claim from non-vegan diet groups is that crop production for plant-based diets kills animals, kills just as many animals, and or kills more animals than the crop production from non-plant-based diets. The counterclaim from vegan diet groups is that while animals happen to die during crop production, the overall number of deaths, regardless of diet group, may be significantly smaller than what is reported. And the nature of these incidents is poorly understood due to a lack of reliable data. Question number two, how are the world's land and resources being utilized? The main point of this question is to help establish the scale and magnitude in which these crop deaths are possibly occurring, while also nailing the coffin on some other important points, which we'll be tying in together towards the end of this video. To help us answer this question, I decided to go on the website Our World in Data. That way they give us an overall breakdown of the utilization of land and resources. As we can see here, 29% of the Earth's surface is land. 71% of the world's land is habitable, 46% of the world's habitable land is used for agriculture, 77% of the world's agricultural land is used for livestock, including grazing land and feed production. But we can also see that it only provides 18% of global calorie supply, including only 37% of global protein supply. So believe it or not, if you want to get your protein, you don't rely on this. But I need to have my protein. Plants don't have protein. 
protein come from chicken, it come from steak, it come from egg and dairy. If I can't have any of that, I'm just going to be a scrawny little weakling. I'm just going to be a skinny little joy boy. Yeah. On the flip side, we see that only 23% of the world's agricultural land is used for crop production, excluding feed production. But that provides 82% of global calorie supply, or 63% of global protein supply. Well, would you look at that? It turns out plants do have protein. Yeah, suck it, meat flakes. And everybody else out there, just remember to keep making the vegan gates. Beef, what a relief. When will this poisonous product cease? And 63% of crop production land is used for 10 major crops that provide 83% of harvested calories, or 68.06% of the world's total calories. And those come from barley, cassava, maize, oil palm, rapeseed, rice, sorghum, soybean, sugarcane, and wheat. But in spite of this, only 37% of total major harvested crops directly feed humans at all despite expansion of croplands. The rest is either used for animal feed, which makes about less than half of the percentage that feeds humans, seed oils, exports, they're processed, industrial use, or it's completely lost. So far we've established that animal agriculture actually uses more land, but yet supplies fewer calories and protein. Well, what about other resources like water? Let's get to that, shall we? After I take some vitamin D. Hmm. Vitamin D is nuts! 70% of freshwater withdrawal is used for agriculture. And to break that down further, 22,441 liters of fresh water per kilogram of food is used for animal-based food, such as cheese, fish, beef, pig meat, lamb and mutton, is it mutton or mutant? Mutton. I don't know. Milk and eggs. And on the other side, we have 10,409 liters of fresh water per kilograms of food, which is used for plant-based foods such as nuts, rice, wheat, peas, maize. You know, like a maze that you go through, that kind of maze. Now it's my turn, and I am merging Shadow Ghoul into the labyrinth wall itself by means of polymerization. Huh? And fruits and vegetables. Now remember, only 30%, 30%. Remember that only 37% of these major crops even feed humans directly, which would make that number even lower as a result. So far we've established that not only does animal agriculture use more land and supply fewer calories and protein, but it also uses significantly more water. So then you might be thinking, what about all the trees that have to be cut down to plant crops? Well, up in here, we don't cut down trees, we smoke trees. Just like that. 72.4% of global deforestation occurs in just five countries or continents alone which are Africa, Asia, Latin America, Brazil, and Indonesia. 56.63% of that deforestation is for pasture expansion of beef, which accounts for 41% of global deforestation. One quarter of the deforestation in these five countries alone and continents is for seed oils, which accounts for 18.4% of global deforestation. 18% of the deforestation in those regions alone is for wood and paper, which accounts for 13% of global deforestation. The other 27.6% of global deforestation goes to other resources, such as fruits, vegetables, sugar, rice, cereal grains, and more. But also remember that only 37% of this is even feeding humans directly. So that number is even lower as a result. Had to get some more coffee, because I don't know about you guys, I'm having a blast making this video. 
An extra coffee makes me go <laughs> If those aforementioned points don't hammer the nail in the coffin, then this certainly will. Because as we can see here, only 1.1% of the world population is even vegan at all. And that number might actually be inflated if we're going by the definition on vegan society. And furthermore, the average non-vegetarian in the United States alone consumes significantly more calories than the average vegetarian. You don't see a problem here? With the previous question, we've been able to establish where these crop deaths are possibly happening and figuring out who's paying for what when it comes to land use and resource use. Now, let's figure out what are these animals that are dying as a result of crop deaths? Allegedly. Or, as I would like to put it, the bestest of the pestest in a world full of tasty crops comes the ultimate machine of destruction that will ravage just about anything in their path when they're hanging. We're talking about the one, the only, the desert locust. But how does that actually pan out in reality? I did find one case report on crop destruction caused by locusts between 2019 and 2020 where they allegedly destroyed tens of thousands of hectares of crops throughout South Asia, but I couldn't find reliable information on the total damages and costs of the destruction. I also found this paper titled Assessment of the Socioeconomic Impact of Desert Locusts and Their Control. But again, the net damage was reported to be relatively low, and the paper is more telling of larger political issues of the region beyond some bugs chewing on crops. This is probably the most likely suspect of a pest causing noteworthy amounts of damage to crops, but estimates and reports are unreliable at best, so it's difficult to really determine the magnitude of their threat level to food supply. Japanese beetles are an invasive species worth considering, since they feed on corn and soybean, among other crops, but I couldn't track down any notable case reports, and they're not considered to be major threats. Corn rootworms are resistant to pesticides, and are allegedly causing trouble in Nebraska and Illinois. But again, I couldn't find any notable case reports of widespread crop damage either. So I'm unsure of how problematic they are. If you happen to find any more information, just be sure to let me know in the comment section down below. Colorado potato beetles are often brought up as problematic critters, and the first case report of them dates back to 1874. But I can't access the report and I really couldn't find anything else on the events, nor any other reliable information. Stink bugs are reported as causing issues to corn and soybean crops in Nebraska as well, but couldn't find any information on them either. No specific cases, just nothing. Other insects such as green peach aphids, diamondback moths, red flower beetles, army worms, caterpillars, cotton bollworms, wheat stern soft, wheat stern. Wheat stem sawflies, spider mites, stalk borers, wheat curl mites, and many others are often mentioned as pests of crops too. But just like the other insects I mentioned, I can't find any reliable data on case reports and estimated damages to crops, total crop production, and socioeconomic impact. All in all, it's very difficult to really figure out just how much damage these insects are causing. And aside from getting some information on locusts, I just couldn't really find anything of note. So at best, we're inconclusive. And get used to hearing that, because you're gonna hear it a lot in this video. It's inconceivable. And now we move on to mammals. And who better to start this than the mouse in the house, yo. Cause it's the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Come inside, it's fun inside. It's the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. And M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-E. -E. In this paper shown on the screen, there was a plague breakout case in Australia back in 1993 and 1994 that allegedly caused upwards of 67 million USD in damages. A 2011 outbreak that allegedly caused double the amount of USD in damages while impacting over 3 million hectares of crops. And another breakout case in 2021, which allegedly costed over triple the amount of the previous two combined. But the nature of the damage is not well understood, so estimates are unreliable at best. 
And the main crop in question was hay. Hey! It's further evident that the mice themselves were more of a vessel than the actual catalysts of the destruction, since they are known to carry parasites such as tapeworm, fleas, lice, mites, ticks, bacteria, and viruses, which can be transferred via bodily excretions and directly affect livestock, crops, and humans. This ultimately means that results are inconclusive at best. That would be inconceivable. Deer and moose are often mentioned as pests, but the only reports I could find were unreliable when it comes to direct impact on livestock and human crops. And the main concern was the rise of automobile accidents involving deer and moose, as well as Lyme disease from the ticks they carry. I tried to find case reports on rabbits, but all I could find was the concern of sarcoptic mange, which is more of a concern of the animals themselves. The one case report I found on squirrels had very low estimated damages, and they seemed to prefer buying stonks on acorns. Another paper I found from University of Nebraska-Lincoln's website looked into crop damages from raccoons, but the damages were overall insignificant in spite of the huge population size of the area. Aside from those main suspects, I couldn't really find much else of value, but if you happen to find any well-documented information, be sure to let us know in the comments section down below. All in all, in spite of a valiant effort from non-insect animals, they didn't really fare much better either. And it seems as though that the viruses, bacteria, and pests that these, ins that these animals are carrying is a more likely culprit of the destruction of these crops, rather than the actual animals themselves. So, say it with me, kids. Inconclusive. It's, it's inconceivable that anybody could be having a meaningful life today. Now we move on to the next question which is what leads to animals dying during crop production. And the three things you hear all the time are pesticides, traps, and some kind of weapons, like maybe swords, machetes, guns, whatever. And you hear all the time about these farmers killing all the animals on the land so they can grow the vegan crops and whatnot, and how these pesticides are totally destroying the environment. But is that what's actually happening? And do we have any metric to go by to determine that? Let's find out. Pesticides are by far the most common form of pest control in crop agriculture. So I pulled up a list of the most common pesticides on Environmental Protective Agency's website and other resources to see what I can find when it comes to their impact on animals and their respective ecosystems. The hazard ratings of the different pesticides vary greatly, and there seems to be some concern regarding aquatic life with the use of pesticides. But aside from a lot of disclaimers and a lot of parroting. I couldn't really come across any relevant case reports or substantial evidence to confirm any of it. I will admit that further investigation may be of importance in a separate video for another time. And I think you know what that means. Inconceivable! Next up, we've got live traps. And foothold traps, otherwise known as leg hold traps, are common practice, although they've come under fire from animal war warfare. I was about to say, animal warfare. Gorilla warfare. <laughs> Our common practice, although they've come under fire from animal welfare organizations for being cruel and painful, and quick kill traps such as coney bears and snare traps are often brought up in crop death discussions as well. Although the effectiveness of these traps seems quite low, as shown in this paper when directly compared to conventional leg hole traps. I suppose we can mention firearms and other weapons, but again, no case reports or any real data of any kind, aside from confirmation bias and anecdotal claims. As a bonus, I tried to find case reports and data that may involve carnivorous animals, such as birds of prey, coyotes, or snakes killing animals in the fields during crop production. But some of the only stuff I could find were attacks on livestock, not animals in the field, so nothing of value. Well, it's not looking too good, because even though we know where these crop deaths are possibly happening, as well as the resource management, or lack thereof, involved with this industry, we still don't fully know who's causing the damage, you know, which pests are destroying crops, as well as what are we doing exactly to kill them, and whether or not this has any real substantial impact on the environment. But we still have a question to answer, which is, what is the death toll during crop production? And this is going to get interesting. 
In this paper titled, Field Deaths in Plant Agriculture, the authors attempt to unpack the claim that there are upwards of 7.3 billion animal field deaths every year. And there were a lot of problems from the get-go. The authors cite a paper in that paper. I'm gonna go get the papers, get the papers. Titled, Focus on Fish, a call to effect of altruists, which supports the idea that fish are poisoned by fertilizer runoff. But they found no case reports or estimates or anything else to support that claim. So that paper is useless. They also cite the USDA's website, which also supports the idea of animal field deaths. But unless I overlooked it, all I could find were statistics on cattle usage and deaths, which is also useless in this context because we're talking about crop deaths. We're not talking about agricultural deaths. And if we go back to the original paper, they wind up conceding how the initial estimate of 7.3 billion field deaths is likely too high due to the lack of reliable, traceable information. In other words, the paper proves that this number is founded on dubious assumptions that can't be backed by any reliable sources of information. So yet again, here we are, inconclusive. Inconceivable! You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Before I share my final thoughts, let's do a quick recap. The vast majority of arable land is used for livestock, which demands more resources and causes more environmental damage while providing significantly less calories for the global population compared to land for crop production. While locusts and rodents may seem to be the most likely pests causing damage to crops, it's more likely that parasites, such as fleas, ticks, mites, tapeworm, along with bacteria and viruses, are more likely culprits since they use these animals as vessels, which can infect other animals, taint food supply, and negatively impact human health. Despite records of crop damage incidents, the nature of these incidents are poorly understood and not well documented, which makes it difficult to determine the overall socioeconomic impact they have on affected regions, let alone global crop production. Despite the prevalence of pest control and potential concerns of environmental impact, Little is understood about how they actually affect ecosystems, further convoluted by the variance of hazard levels and efficacy of pesticides and live traps and weapons, respectively. The 7.3 billion annual death toll of wild animals as a result of crop production cannot be properly determined due to a flawed study method and lack of reliable empirical data and is most likely to be overinflated, worst case scenario. Vegan diet groups make up only around 1% of the world population and consume fewer calories compared to the average non-vegan diet group, while 30% of the average non-vegan diet group's caloric consumption comes from animal sourced food, which supports the animal agricultural industry. Therefore, vegans contribute the least to resource depletion. We can improve food supply and reverse climate change with less land than we currently use if everyone were to switch to a plant-based diet this century. If you're having trouble getting started, please go to PETA's website to grab a vegan starter kit full of delicious plant-based recipes, and it's completely free. They also provide resources for parents and children to go vegan. Challenge 22 provides free coaching for plant-based dietitians. Be sure to check out the Epic Oxford Cohort Study, which goes over how vegans have the lowest risk to chronic disease, cancer, and deficiencies. Vegan diets are also safe and effective for your fur babies, so be sure to check out this paper on Plus One's website, and there's plenty of options for vegan pet food and accessories. Be sure to check out the plethora of free vegan documentaries available online, many of which are available on YouTube. I'll leave the links to all these resources in the description box down below. All right, guys, that's everything. I'd like to thank you for sticking with me till the end. I know it was a lot to get through, but as you can see, we successfully debunked crop deaths, and we also painted the bigger picture on a lot of the other problems surrounding this subject. And if you found this video useful or helpful in any way, if you enjoyed it, be sure to give me a like, leave me some love in the comment section down below, and don't forget to subscribe, turn on that notification bell, that way you get notified the next time I upload, if you want to follow me on TikTok, it's the same as my YouTube. If you want to support me on Patreon, it's also the same as my YouTube and TikTok. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.